Punkin, what's happening? What is that, Punkin? What's she doing? It finally happened. She. Oh, I missed it. Kitten found the Christmas tree. I'll put the other video that was filmed up and down in portrait mode so you can see what just happened. Wondered if that was going to happen. Yeah, flocked trees make things itchy and sneezy, don't they? That's not. Sp oh, hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's it doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Wasn't Tane starts video this way, but a cute thing was happening. Now I get to reshape the tree. Reshape the tree and brush the flocking stuff off the cat. I'm going to brush her out and then go do some gardening things, I think. I don't know. I wasn't intending on starting the video yet. I just released last weekend's video. You know, Kitten did cute kitten things and I needed to show everybody. And now I'm going to vacuum for it. We don't need to worry about all that. Let's go do some plant stuff. Oh, good morning, Turbs. Good morning. How you doing? Yeah, there's a lot of glow. You're so shiny. What a beautiful color, Turbo. Chocolate Sapphire Turbo. Look at you. Been doing some Christmas decorating. Not a lot. Just getting in what I can when I have time. There we go. Started hanging up some of the ornaments onto the garland and lots of shiny fun things over here. I love these bells. I just remember that this vlog, when it comes out, will be after Thanksgiving. So if there's Christmas stuff going on, people can't yell at me for it. I have anything at Christmas planned for the week though. I do have some poinsettias that I'd like to get set up on this bar over here. There's obviously things need to be moved. So might work on that, maybe. Need to buff the scratches out of this tank. Got the back of it painted. I like that color a lot. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's called Atlantic Blue. It's a Valspar color. It's a lot like the Cerulean Crayola Crayon, doesn't it? I don't know how it's gonna show on camera, but I want to have this not necessarily set up, but at least get everything done with it that I needed to get done while it's on the tile. Get that moved back to the dining room before the holiday, because this, this is just stupid. It's going to go right here. This is where it has to go, because this is where the floor has been <laughs> reinforced to hold the tank up. But with the new wood and everything, I just figured while I'm doing work on the stand, like light sanding and some restaining, cleaning up the glass, doing things where there's just going to be more mess to do that on the tile, because it's a lot easier to clean up off the tile. I it deviated so much. What was happening? I was attempting to film the intro, which is supposed to be really brief and talk about what's going on. I have some stuff I would like to get cleared up in the backyard, set up some evergreen planters. Maybe I probably only get around to doing one of them. And then head out to the grow space and do a couple of things out there. The only thing that stands out in my head right now is I want to repot the aeonium. I have a different pot that I think that, that would look so much better in. You can't come with me. I'm sorry, Turbs. You're gonna have to hang out in here while I go out in the grow space. Yeah, see? Poinsettias. Got them right here, they're ready to go. These are, I get them every year, usually at Home Depot because they have good Black Friday sales on them. These right here were I think two for 10 bucks and those were I think 18 or 19. And they have three different colors in them. I prefer the variegated ones that have the red and white on the foliage or the flower, but I didn't see those. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Well, they're so wrapped in plastic sitting on the garage floor when I could show them off later, all set up and looking nice. Uh, what was, oh, Aeonium. I want to move it into that other pot right there, that little one. Go ahead and get y'all set up on a tripod so the camera's not wobbling all over the place. So in order to move this plant right here into this pot, I need to, well, I just need to drill a hole. There should be plenty of soil in there to make up for the pot size difference. This is a uh, pop grun. <laughs> That's what it says. P-O-P-G-R-U-N. Made in Germany. I don't, I don't know. It's just a fun like lime green pot. Okay, diamond bit. Going to need water. A container to set that in so the water doesn't spill over the place. And I need to get the drill. That's kind of out of the way. And I hope that I remember to charge the battery. Yeah, should be good. Get some water on there and then just, you know, do the drilling. Oh, that went much, much, much more easily than I expected. Quick and easy. Now my pot's covered in dirty ceramic dust water. I think that looks much better. Pardon the lighting. Still ironing some things off. Uh, uh, off, off. <laughs> ironing some things out, out here with the lighting. I have a new light that's really bright, but the bracket that I need to hang it from the ceiling, it's been in the mail supposedly for like two weeks. I don't know what that's about. It should have been here by now. 
I have a piece of screen I'm gonna drop in here just because it was sitting right next to me, so I figured, why not? I don't usually put screening in the bottom of the containers, but it was just right there. That'll help hold some soil back. Not that I really care about that. We get soil all over the place out here. Like I said, it was right here, so it's fine. Is that better? That's a little bit better. Not quite as many shadows. Do you want to see what I'm working with right here, right now? Because the other light isn't set up yet. I just have a shop light hanging hey, from part of another lamp right here. I have other lights. There are lots. There's lots of lights around. Have a few of those going too. I actually don't really mind it. It looks kind of artsy, having it went from a different angle. So this Aeonium picked up, <laughs> picked up. I got this from a seller on Etsy. I don't remember the name of the store, but there was a whole video on it. Aeonium Pink Witch was the name. It was basically a rooted cutting. That's not what it was sold as. It was sold as a five inch plant, but then they specified that they trim the roots off to prevent sending insects and things to people, which probably not best to have potted it just like 10 days ago and then to be digging it up and potting it again. But I like this pot better, so I'm doing it anyways. Surprising, I think I could actually use a little bit more soil. Let's see what I can scrape off the table here. And uh, this will just have to do because I'm not set up right now to make a mix for a succulent. Oh, no. Actually, I think that's just about perfect. There's about maybe half an inch of space between the top of the soil and the top of the container, but that's okay because I am going to be backfilling this with gravel or rocks or maybe some type of colorful glass chips, something of the sort. Because the plant isn't rooted, have to make sure there's a lot of support around it so that it's not moving around a lot. That way the roots aren't being pulled and tugged away at. There we go. I think that looks nice. Yeah. Nice colorful plant, a nice colorful pot. That did sink down some more when I put it in there. I'm definitely gonna have to add some more soil to that, but this will, it's okay. This is fine for now. I'll do the rest later when I'm not surrounded by lights and I can actually get up and walk around and mix up some more soil. You get the point. The pot looks much better, doesn't it? Okay, that's just one of those little things that's been on the back of my mind for a couple of days. It's been bugging me, so I'm glad to have that done. Now, we'll go out to the backyard, get um, stuff out there. I need to clean up the gingers that are the bamboo planters. Those are probably going to be difficult to get out. And then I'd like to set up a container in between them and do something alpine-y, wintry. Some stuff for some winter interest. It feels nice to be outside, doesn't it, Turbo? Nice, cool, crisp day, like mid-50s. I want to get some stuff done. Talked about this in the last vlog. I think it's time to get this spot cleaned up. Have a bunch of gingers here that need to be cut out. Some stuff to blow off the deck and some more cold tolerant plants to pile into the area and just make it more uh, welcoming. Because this is, that's a gross. It's not a look anybody wants in their yard. Okay, where's my, I thought I was prepared. I wasn't prepared. That's better. I was gonna cut away at these, but I wonder if I should just pull them. Oh, these are covered in mealybugs. It's not the end of the world. Mealybugs happen, we're moving into winter here, and the main thing is I'm not seeing them on the house plants. These clippers are done. They keep jamming shut, and I just sharpened them, and I know it doesn't look like it, but I also just cleaned these. It's gonna make this take a long time. Yeah, you know, that took forever. I'm gonna go find a different pair of clippers. Can't find any other clippers. I'm gonna try my gardening shears, which I think will work just fine for gingers. Eh, okay, maybe, maybe not so much. Crap, you know what? Let's grab a shovel, let's dig them up. That's probably the right way to do this anyways, because these are going to be very difficult to uproot in the springtime when I wanna put something else in here. Gingers are notorious for having a pretty intense and strong root system. Wiggle that around a little bit. Okay, one more should get them up. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, big solid clump. There might still be some life left in the, no, don't do it. I was about to say that maybe I just stepped on something wooden and it broke. 
<laughs> maybe I should hold on to those rhizomes, cut them back and replant them in the spring. But that particular ginger really just didn't perform the way I wanted it to. It's not one I would plant here again. They just need too much time to get into their bloom for our growing season. Our growing season, just as far as when the heat's here, it's not long enough for them. There are better options though, the zingiberts, myogas. I think those would do really well here. And those are perennial. Well, they're perennial in the ground for zone 6A, 6B, some down to zone 5, but the nice variegated ones are more 6B to 7. But those would look nice here if I'm going to have something in these pots with that growth on them that doesn't even flower. May as well be something like that that's perennial. Not as vigorous as those gingers are, but that's it doesn't matter. The irony that there are so many mealybugs in those gingers because it reeks of neem oil over here. I have sprayed so much this year. That apparently just not enough. Hey, this one doesn't want to come up. It's being more stubborn. In this instance, having the clippers to cut them back would be really useful. I don't understand what happened to those clippers other than, well, I probably need to take them apart. We don't, we don't have to talk about that right now. So just get in here and get them cut out. The machete, machete might work. Just sharpen that too, look at that edge. Nice and sharp. Probably not in focus. Take my word for it. Nice and sharp. <laughs> Apparently I didn't sharpen it enough. I don't think it's actually the gingers. There's some bamboo intertwined in there. And that's what's making things more difficult with the clippers and everything. Okay. Not done, but maybe cleared out a big enough spot to actually get in there with the trowel. It's supposed to be a really quick task. I got stuff to do. I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving. Did y'all have a good Thanksgiving, by the way? Didn't talk about that. I hope you did. I just got the menu written down and need to get moving on the shopping and everything so I can handle all that. When clippers get like this, a nut on here that can be loosened that comes right off, these will come apart. And I usually give them a good soak in something like CLR. I have a rust remover that I've shown in videos before that I really like to use. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it up here on the screen. And sometimes gently going at them with a Brillo pad gets all that stuff off. And when they're apart, it's much easier to sharpen them. So what's going on here is this, this piece right here, that one right there, the top, that's sharpened freshly sharpened except for down here. Same with down here. I couldn't get the sharpener in there. So basically they just need to be taken apart and given a proper sharpening. That's why they keep gumming up to cut things and then pull them back apart. It's really annoying. Annoying, but completely fixable, which is always nice. My God, this is the most stubborn clump of ginger I've ever had to dig up. It reminds me of digging up a, a grass, like a pampas grass or some sort of reed grass when those die back they basically turn to a stone in the middle could be a clay soil thing playing into all that too but it is just like it does not want to budge <sighs> you know what it's fine i'll just cut the rest of it back that's better than doing nothing i just wanted to get most of the brown out of these pots also if i had cut these when they were still green would have been a whole different story the only reason that i didn't cut them while they were still green was because i didn't know how long they would last out here didn't know what kind of damage the cold would do to him, so just wanted to let that play out and see what happened. And well, it was just like one night in the 20s is so all it took to kill them back. Hey, what's done is done. <laughs> that doesn't look good. For right now, I don't care. I think that that's largely just because my mindset when it comes to fall and winter gardening is I expect some clumps of things that are cut down. Cause that's basically what every ornamental grass I have looks like just expect to see some perennials that are cut back like that. It's not a perennial. Nobody else knows that it's fine. There we go. That looks better. Not perfect. It needs to be rinsed off, but I'm not going to bother with that because I have another container that I want to pot up over here and I'm going to spill dirt. There we go. I don't like that. I can see my little potting bench back there. Potting bench. Pottery storage area. Knocked a few more things down, but this is going to be nice. I have this Atlas Blue Cedar to put in there and some other just cool looking alpine -y plants. Little things to drop in there. And wouldn't you know, I just remembered, I don't have potting soil, so I'm going to run to the hardware store and then get back here and get that looking nice. And there's a centipede in there. I want to give that critter some time to decide what he wants to do. Go down deeper or come on out. Okay, next day. Is that surprising to anybody? Usually if I have to go run an errand, it means I'll pick up the next day. Got this partially fall of soil, also the construction. I'm sure you'll be able to hear it. Lots of noise in the background. Just going to work through it. The entire point of this container 
At least what I had in mind was to just have some evergreens out here. I like the blue on this cedar. See that better when I'm done. You can go and have a better look at it. I'm just faux potting it, treating this larger pot like a cash pot because, well, there are a lot of reasons actually. Um, main reason being that this is pretty loose in its container that it's in already. So I don't want to disturb those roots and cause any problems that you know that you would get from tearing the roots up. Just want to keep everything intact until the springtime when it's safe to either plant out the tree or bump it up into a larger container. But I probably won't be doing that since it hasn't really done anything in the container that it's in, right? That and this is a zone six plant. I know technically now I live in zone seven, but I'm still going to be having the same hiccups that we always had in zone six. So I don't I'm not really full on into this zone change that we're having here in St. Louis. There could be nights where this may need to be pulled in or the container covered. Sometimes I'll just wrap them with some lights to help keep things warm. But since it's up and exposed, I want to leave the option there for myself to be able to actually pick this thing up and just pull it out of this container and pop it in the house or the garage would probably be a better idea. If for some reason we have another of those polar vortexes, something come through where it's you know, like negative 15 degrees, that would just, that, I don't think it would like that. It's a cedar. It would probably be fine, but just to be safe, I want to keep like this so I have that option and just for watering, right? Because those roots haven't really taken to the container they're in. They're not going to take to this giant container. It'll be easier to keep this watered in the winter when I know that there's just a central area that's going to help hold some of the moisture in for this plant. And then while I was out, I grabbed some little, what did I do with them? There he is. Look at all, you see all these? Look at all of them. I think you little giant is going to be similar to the tater tot arbs. These are a zone three through eight. They go four to five feet tall and wide, I believe. No, four to five feet tall and three to four feet wide. Turbo, I know you think you're helping, but you're actually in the way. Good boy, get out of here. They had these sitting out with a lot of the holiday plants with the what, lemon balm sedums, those things. The lemon balm, lemon, is it lemon balm seed? Not sedum. That's a, see, what's the lemon cypress? Never mind. That's what I was trying to think of. They're only like 12 bucks a pop. That's a pretty good deal on something like this about, if not a little bit less than what I would expect to pay for these during the growing season when we be buying these to go into the landscape. These, they have the growers flap on them still. Can you see that? Pulls off pretty easily. Want to take that off for ease of watering. These I could probably pot into, eh, no, that's really loose. You see that? A lot of give there. I am not going to pop those directly into the soil either. Get asked, why don't you just pop them directly into the soil? And I'm like, well, I just spent so much time explaining it. But in a nutshell, just to reiterate, go over it one more time, makes it easier to water the plants during the winter. Winter time, they're not going to spread those roots out into the surrounding soil. So that surrounding soil that's in there with a fresh plant like this is really just there to help hold them in place. Hold them in place and provide some insulation. Help insulate the containers. There's not a lot of dry winter air blowing around them, drying them out more quickly. And then when it comes time to water, I have a target that I can hit. It's just right here. Keeping the plants hydrated during winter when they're in, a, well, period, but especially when they're in a container is uh, very important. This one right here, that feels pretty solid. And you could go both ways on that conversation of whether or not to go ahead and just put them into the containers or wait as if this is a really solid root mass or it's in some type of heavy clay when you water it that water is just going to rush away from that root ball right into the more loose fresh potting medium path of least resistance right it's just going to want to flow from the stubborn soil go right around there into the more loose welcoming soil the fresh soil that surrounds those roots but if they're in the container that water is going to stay there and stay in place these are in a potty mix that looks pretty similar to the potty mix that I'm putting these in. The roots are not loose enough to get torn up. That's the biggest thing to avoid is tearing up the roots in the winter time. Right, so really, I could just plop these right in here. As they are, it's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, I think they look good like that. I would like to have those two a little bit further back, but it's not really going to fit and I don't want to tear those roots up. That's what I've been talking about this whole time, right? Preserve those roots. Don't want to rip them up when <laughs> they're not going to have the weather and desire to regrow themselves. I'm going to take a break and see if the beeping in the background, the buzzing calms down. Oh, the second I hit record, a leaf blower starts going. Seriously? Okay, well, there it is. Nothing grandiose or spectacular, just working with what I could find. I popped a couple of hellebores in here. These are the Sandy Shores Honeymoon Series hellebore. Doesn't that have a beautiful flower on it? 
I love this hellebore. I don't recall when this one blooms. I think it's an early spring one. I don't think it's one that blooms in the early winter. Oh, it says right here, early spring to mid spring. That's good. I also, I might need to tuck them into the back. I think there'll be enough shade here for them, but we'll have to wait and see. I have found that hellebores can usually take a lot more sun than we give them credit for. And I just thought things are gonna be a little bit warmer right here in the front of the container than in the back. I feel like the front could be a smidge bit too much light, but the back will probably be way too much shade. It's making it work. And if I need to move them to the back, I'll move them to the back. It might even actually look better to have the balls in the front with these behind them, assuming these were to put on some height. Don't know if they will, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, okay, I like that. It looks pretty good. I would like to top dress this with some gravel but I don't have any, so I'm not gonna be doing that. I have a couple of containers that I can put into these corners in between everything. That one down right in there. I need to move that wire, but it goes to some lighting, and I'm afraid that if I move it, I'm gonna mess something up. I really wish I had two of these because isn't this one of the most beautiful cabbages that you've ever seen? I don't have a name on it. It's practically luminous. It just says accent on it. Oh, I do have a name, Ruby Perfection. I was just kidding. It's Ruby Perfection. Isn't it beautiful? A couple of these every year this year, I got one and it was an arrangement on my front porch. And now I'm wishing that I had two because then I could have one on each side here, but oh, well, I'm not going to put it in here. I think that that would look stupid. I don't like the way that looks with the other plants that were smaller or maybe white. Maybe, but it's not. I just tuck it over here. It's so weird that there isn't one on each side of the container. I'll just plop it right there for now, it's fine. It would look better if there were two, but I, that ginger, I need to get my hand saw out and prune those roots out before I can even remove it. So this will work. The only other evergreens I have out here that I think would work in this location are some of these yuccas. And I don't think that they will fit into these pots all that well. Oh no, that's fine. That works. I need to come in and clean up the trunks on these, but I don't want to do that in the winter time. All that mess on those trunks is going to help provide some protection from the cold. Another one right here. Might need to do some maneuvering. <laughs> They're a little bit too big for those containers, but it's evergreen. They don't look great though, right? And they're fine. They're perfectly healthy. They just need a pruning, but they just have that yucca look to them that I don't know if I want for the spot. It's the only thing I have two of though, so that this is gonna have to work. Fine, everything's fine. This is perfect. I'm popping this Fetzia in front of that container so that you can't even tell that the ginger wasn't torn out. Nobody will even know. <laughs> Thank you, Turbo. Looking right into frame. Yeah, Fetzia is gonna cover up that ginger that's there. The yuccas, yeah, I'll probably end up moving them because that just doesn't really look great. I think the container on its own looked better than having these two right there. But for now, at least the plants are together. It makes them easier to water. And it's a nice, mostly sheltered location. Things against this wall tend to stay warmer. I also dropped the soft serve. Fall cypress over there. That's going in the ground. I have a whole bunch of shrubs that are going in the ground next week. Whole bunch of yews and then that soft serve. Maybe a Japanese maple. I don't know. We will see. Because I'll be working on over the weekend when there's not going to be a construction crew outside making a lot of background noise. <laughs> you can definitely see that those pots don't fit into each other. This one's covered up more. That one, not so much. That's the other thing. If I prune all this stuff off, all these old leaves, and you're going to be able to see that those pots don't actually fit together, which isn't, that's not that big of a deal. I could just throw some burlap around the edges of the containers and it would be fine. Although I would like to repot, the, I can't repot these right now. It's the wrong time of year for that. But they do need to be repotted. They need to be bumped up into larger containers. Another reason they need to stay in these lightweight plastic containers, because even though I'm a zone seven and these are a zone seven plant, will be nights when I need to take these inside because they're in small containers. They don't have any protection. You know, containers, plants are more exposed, right? Hence all the soil and everything I put around the, the bushes that you can't even see in there anymore. Up close, that doesn't look too bad though, when you can't see those trunks and all the brown stuff on there, all the dyed, dead, dying leaves. Yeah, I'll probably cut those off this weekend too. It's getting cold, hands are getting numb, so I'm gonna just say that this is good. That's an improvement, need to blow it off again. <laughs> Still move some pieces around, but uh, it's better and it just feels nice and refreshing to have something nice to look at over here. If I come across some gravel, like, I, I don't know, I'm not just gonna stumble across gravel, but next time at the hardware store, I'll probably grab a bag of some cooler color stones and gravel with, that has a nice earthy tone to it and top this off with that. So I think it would look nice not looking at the soil in there. Something I had been thinking about for this spot has been maybe doing a greenhouse 
a pop-up greenhouse, partially just because I'm really curious about this pop-up greenhouse craze that I'm seeing all over Amazon. They're relatively inexpensive and they're basically just like a pop-up party canopy, like things people take to parks and beaches, like a giant umbrella, but with walls, essentially. I'm looking at the pictures of them in people's yards. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I would want that back here. Technically, I don't think the HOA would be okay with it, but like, you know, they don't have to know, right? Maybe they would. I don't know. I don't think it counts as a freestanding building when it's just a canopy. I could probably make an argument with that. It has four walls on it. So I don't know, it's something I have to think about. This spot would lend itself well to one of those, probably an eight by six or so something very small but it would be the right size so that I could bend the bamboo inside of the containers. The more sheltered the bamboo is during the winter, the better that's going to perform in the spring and the more growth you get out of it. Almost lost it completely last winter, last December in that polar vortex that swept through everything. And on those random nights when it does drop below 10, which is when I like to move my windmill palms inside, I could just keep them over here. Just have them in the spot all winter long in a greenhouse that would be kind of unheated. I'd probably throw some lights, something on the inside to produce some warmth, but it would be more of a wind shelter than a greenhouse. Cause those little plasticky pop-up greenhouses, they're not gonna provide a ton of insulation. The main thing would just be to try and keep it between 15 and 25 degrees on the inside. And that would make a tremendous difference for the types of plants that I'd be putting in there. It could keep the oleanders inside of it. I said the windmill palms and mule palms, they would be pushed up against the roof but that's fine, just extra support because things don't look very sturdy. I have a ton of sandbags left over from what I had to do to hold up the one of the queen palms that was falling over. I could weigh it down with one of those things, but then I have to wonder how long would the thing even last? I'm probably talking about it too much because if I end up getting it, I'm gonna be reiterating all of these things, but I thought I would bring it up and just get some feedback. Have any of y'all tried those pop-up greenhouses before? Do you have any experience with them? Like I said, they look pretty flimsy. Uh, it's not the kind of thing where I would expect to get many years out of it. That type of material tends to get really hard in the sun and crack. And uh, when it's going to be the most vulnerable is going to be when there's snow and ice bearing on top of it, which is going to be when I would want it the most. So I'd probably end up covering it with an additional tarp, something of the sorts, just to be safe. So then I go, is it even worth it? I don't know. It's one of those things where it's more like, I think it would be fun to try out, uh, to you know, set it up on the channel, have something over here that hopefully wouldn't be too ugly because the neighbors have to look at it too. And that's something I have to keep in mind. So I don't want it to look really bad. The kind of thing that I would only even have set up though for January and February, maybe half of December and half of March. So call that three months maximum. Maybe it actually would have a decent amount of life in it. Cause like I said, the plants that are going in there are plants that I just want to keep above 10 degrees. Mule palms, oleanders, the gardenias those things and I wouldn't have to scoot them into the garage for just those few nights when it does drop really cold. It would provide the extra protection for the bamboos to so get a lot more growth out of them in the springtime. I could even take the fountain and scoot it over to the middle so it'd be a, <laughs> not a water source, but something to provide some humidity on the inside, you know, may as well make it look as nice on the inside as possible, assuming everything would fit. The only other issue here is that a lot of the plants have gotten pretty tall. Eight by sixes are only eight feet tall. The ones that go up to 10 feet tall or like 12 by 12 and that's way too big. That would be huge. I don't need something like that out here. And uh, the smaller, the better as far as not upsetting any neighbors with having something like that set up out here. So that's, that was just thinking out loud. Thought I'd pluck y'all's brain, see what you have to say about it. See if anybody's tried those before. I'm gonna make up my mind here in the next couple of weeks and I will be paying attention to the comments and what people's feedback is. If anything, I think it would just be a fun thing to unbox and open up and play with for the channel. So I'll probably end up doing it no matter what, but just wanted to know what other people's experiences are. Hey Floof, where are you going, Stinky? Always got somewhere to go. She's been <laughs> very independent the last couple of days. A couple of days later from that last clip, I know it was sort of an abrupt ending. It got cold, I didn't know what else to say. So I was like, I'm done, just moving on. I'm entirely sure moving on to what, but I was just done. It's time, could you not? Could we just not, not on the furniture? You have scratching things everywhere, not on the furniture. Have about four hours put into <laughs> polishing the front of this tank. There's still a long way to go. That's definitely not getting done by Thanksgiving, especially since Thanksgiving was yesterday. Yeah, Thanksgiving's over. Got canceled. Everyone's sick, so gonna try again next week, which will be better timing because I'm gonna have family in town. 
next week. She's so stinking cute. You're such a cute little floof. I just want to take you and smush you and me. Oh, more stretches to do over there, huh? I did remember one thing though, and I've meant to talk about this when I was planting things. It was important and I meant to talk about it in the clips before and I didn't. The, the other reason that I wanted to make sure this is left open in the front and wanted to get these gingers out of here, which is a good thing I remembered this because I need to get in here and I'm gonna use my handsaw and just cut away at the roots of those and that should work a lot better. I wanted to get that all opened up because I have a lot of bulbs coming in the mail next week. So need to get these cleared out. And I was thinking I'll probably pull these yuccas out because it just, it doesn't look good. I don't like the way those look there. I'm just gonna do bulbs in those two containers. So it's gonna look really nice in the spring. Gonna be popping bulbs in all the containers around here because there, there are a lot of them coming. A couple hundred, no, this is probably closer to a thousand. That's a lot of bulbs. Mostly daffodils, a few hundred tulips, I believe. And we having a lot of color out here in the springtime. I'm excited about it. It is freezing cold. It's been a busy week. So even though I didn't have Thanksgiving, I still had cooked the majority of Thanksgiving dinner. I'm wiped out, as I'm sure all of you are. You know, family holidays, they're fun, but it can also be draining. I'll be doing it again next week. On that note, videos the next couple weeks might be shorter than normal just because I'm having family in town and we're going to redo Thanksgiving and possibly early do Christmas. Today's gonna be a lot going on. Not like do Christmas, Christmas, but get all the Christmas decorating and things. And there's just gonna be a lot going on around here. That's not YouTube stuff, but I'll do my best. I'll be around. I'll make sure there's videos out Wednesdays and Saturdays. It just probably won't be very long. It's supposed to get down to 23 tonight. I should probably shut those dolphins off. The rest of the pool should be fine with that. Nah, I should probably turn that down just to be safe. Make sure the filters are all cleaned and cleared out tonight so that the water can move through them without any pressure back up. There's a pressure back up, the heater turns off. If the heater turns off, that could be a problem at 23. I think we're gonna have a few more nights coming up here in the 20s. So we had to make sure that's all handled and taken care of. Can we talk about the heptacodium real quick? The thing, it's still green and it's still flowering. And this lighting, it looks like it's rotting and dying, but it's not. It's green and it still has those pink fuchsia flowers on it. it just, that's really impressive to me. I'm still not a huge fan of that plant, but once it grows a few more feet and it's not as wild looking and starts to get some structure to it, I'm sure I'll like it more. I appreciate it the most at the end of the year and at the beginning because it flushes out early. You get some nice and quick green out here in the springtime and then you have the extra green in the fall into winter. Speaking of fall into winter, it is very cold. It's like 39 degrees and it smells like winter. You know that smell? Like, a, uh, it smells like it's gonna snow. I don't think it's going to, but it smells like it. That crispness in people's fireplaces or doing things. I just, I love that smell. It's so refreshing. Not all that great for the tropical plants, but all the tropicals are, it's, oh, the alocasias. I'm going to move those in as soon as I'm done recording, because those will die tonight. I dug them up, but that was stupid to do if I wasn't going to move them in. So I have to bring those inside. And uh, yeah, that's, that's going to do it. Thanks for hanging out. It's another random vlog doing random things. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi, what have you had going on? Hopefully you had a great holiday for those of you who are in the US and celebrate Thanksgiving. I hope you had a good time. Lots and lots and lots to be grateful for these days, given, you know, things that are going on around the rest of the world. Reminders of things to be grateful for even more so right now. I'm not, we don't need to get preachy about all that. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Back in on that crunchy leaf. Why not use one of the nice ones? I always go to this nasty, crunchy leaf. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.